First things first, guys. How are you? Yeah, good. Yeah, doing good. Yeah. Good to hear. So, before we talk about your upcoming album, I'd like to go back a little bit. Mm -hmm. So, Ali, do you remember the first time you heard him play music? Um, yes, I do. I mean, I'd heard, I, I'd heard his music online and I, I met him at his own gig okay. that my friend was supporting. So that's how we became friends. It was a, it was an awful gig. Terrible gig. Yeah. In, in what way? The, well, the support band played like a 10 song set and had to be like shooed off stage. <laughs> and then once they were done, they were to the back talking and there wasn't many other people there. So, but, so you heard the music? What yeah, was yeah I heard Ed's impression? music. Um, yeah, I really liked it. It was, it was kind of just powerful voice, I think. I mean, you did it all just acoustic guitar and vocally really well, a lot of it. Um, it was kind of similar to the music that I was making and wanted to make. Um, and then you made some and did it better. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so, uh, Ed, for you, when, uh, when you started talking, did you know he was a musician? And that he yeah, we'd both, we'd both heard um, each other's uh, music before and I think there was kind of a mutual appreciation of each other's stuff. Um, I mean, I was probably a bit jealous of how well Ali could produce. He's a much better producer than me. So. Um, I just wanted to use him for his production. No, uh, <laughs> Pretty much. But, um, yeah, I think we, we both just kind of liked each other's stuff and that was just how it started. And so, Fall was the first song you did together? Yeah. yeah. That, that was kind of like, after he did his show, it was kind of near my hometown. Um, he stayed at my house and was like, let's just start writing, let's just try some things, play some guitar. And Faux was one of the first songs we wrote. And I was like, well, let's just produce it, let's make it. And I, kind of, I think it went better than we both expected. And then we just found a label and put it out. And it was at the point, at that point, I think it was one of my highest quality, quality productions and one of my favorite songs I'd made. Um, so from then on, we were just like, yeah, let's do more. Yeah, I mean, we, we started writing um, a lot uh, as, soon as, we, as soon as we met. And in fact, one of the, pretty much the first song we wrote is, is gonna be on this, this okay. record that's coming out. Um, but. Uh, it was, I think it was more of a situation of like, we, we had a lot of good stuff written and I was trying to convince you to let's just make all these songs because they're all really good. Um, yeah. So uh, in the end, um, I think based on the success of Fur and then, and then Alps as well, which was kind of done while we were properly recording everything and we just thought, well, Alps just fits so well by itself that we just released that yeah. anyway. But um, yeah, I just kind of convinced Ali and then... There was, there was no pressure by any label right. or anything because both of us were kind of unsigned and just self-releasing things that we were just we were just doing it for the sake of it just because we wanted to. There was no like album campaign waiting, but now it is going to be released with a label. Sure. And now after having made the new album, how do you look back at Fall at, at, and then um, the, the way you work together then? I think it's interesting. It's quite kind of formative. I think Alps fits uh, more with the record than than Faux does, um, but it's still I still think it's a great song. It's really fun to play live. We still play it in a live set and stuff. Yeah, what do you think? I mean, I think if we produced it now, it'd be different. Mm -hmm. I'm sure, but I think it still holds as one of my favourite ones that we've done together. Um, but yeah, it just doesn't really fit on the record. I don't think it's it's closer to my style of music than to our style of music. I right. think. Yeah. And, and you say there were no pressures from labels or anything, so. At that point, were you looking to, to work with somebody or was it um, more per chance? Because obviously <coughs> you were uh, working on your own material as well. So has that now taken yeah. the back seat a little bit? Um, well, basically, it was more that I was kind of carrying on trying to just make music and find a label for the bigger picture thing for me. And the stuff I was doing with Ed was kind of, uh, well, it's, it's both passion project things, but it's, it, it, didn't really take precedent and I think when we came to the realization that we're actually making a full album it was like okay well I'm gonna have to step aside for a second and just focus all of this onto this album because mm. it took a while to mix and actually record. Yeah. Um, but it was fairly sporadic I mean it's, it's taken... Like it was like three and a half years over like week-long periods because we don't live near each other so he'd come to my studio for a week and record right. and, and then wouldn't go do home. Anything for yeah like then we'd do anything like since we started making the album I, I released my own EP and then like three other singles as well not off the EP so it's yeah it's it's not like I completely stepped aside. Is it a challenge then to get in the right headspace for each of, of your pro projects? Um, well because 
there's this is collaborative I have Ed there when we're producing it and he's like this is a great idea let's do this song and I'm like no I don't like this one and he'll kind of talk it's me pretty into much it I guess. <laughs> yeah yeah so Ed pretty much would talk me into something like then our next single terraform was something I didn't want on the record at all why not um, because when when we like demoed it it was just like this piano song and I just couldn't hear how it was gonna sound I, I just like, immediately had work. the idea of how it was gonna sound and then I was just kept like, I was so convinced we were gonna do it so then we set up, we just planned a week to record it yeah and we got there and then this, once we started properly recording it Ali got it straight away and now it's probably my favorite song on the record okay. so. and, and Ed you men mentioned one of the songs that, that was written very early on that ended up which song was that uh, it's called Euphor I think it's the second song on the record but um, it's, it's funny because that's gone through a lot of the songs on the record have gone through a lot of different iterations I think that's one one thing that like well, not having a label was, you know, a reason for that as well because yeah. we weren't showing anyone, and no one was there saying, "Yeah, that's a great song. Let's mm. take that one. That one's done." But like, I mean, U4 itself, that first song originally we wrote it with the chorus just being like really kind of heavy, like, like just like really like pounding drum and stuff, and now it literally just drops out to piano. Um, and then there's another song on the record called Ontario, which has had a different chorus before. It had a different bridge, and now we've completely took those out and did other parts and stuff. It's really, it's really fun to kind of just have that freedom to. You know, just do whatever, and 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 I think one really important thing that I learned working with Ali is, don't be afraid to change something if you even have a slight doubt about it, because mm. it will lead to a better song or whatever um, because of that. And I think the album as a whole is just very kind of refined in that sense. There's nothing we've kind of cut all the fat from it. If, right. Yeah. And, and those kind of uh, kinds of des uh, decisions, is it easier to make those the, being the two of you or, or when you're alone? Sometimes easier, sometimes harder. Yeah, I think, I think in general it's easier because when I'm making music on my own, I, I'm very indecisive as a person in, in general and I'll kind of play over an idea for so long and kind of work it till it's dead mm. and can't hear how to get out of it and then I'll start the song again from scratch and then I'll kind of be happy. But whereas working with Ed, I can, you know, we can just bounce ideas off each other and be like, no, I don't like that, and say, okay, we won't use that. And it's just nice to get someone else's opinion, really. It's, yeah, it's, it's hard just, working on your own all the time. It's great to have another creative influence and like, there's, there's a lot of stuff that necessarily would have been used that hasn't been used and stuff that uh, wouldn't have been used that now has been used. I mean, there's a song, because I do some co-writing for Ali Solis stuff as well, and there's a song called Embody Me on his last EP that um, he wasn't going to use. He's had like, I think it was the first two thirds of that song, mm -hmm. and I really liked it. I was like, "You should really use this." And then we wrote like the end bridge part for it, and it ended up going on the EP. And um, yeah, yeah, it's just strange how having just one other person as a creative influence can make such a big difference. But I think it's yeah, it's really important. And like you say, you, you'll do anything for the sake of the song. So did you have? And this might be a difficult question to answer, but what were you looking for? Did you have a picture in your mind what, what the album would be or sound like? Not at first, I don't think. No, not really at first. I mean, once we kind of nailed down nine songs we wanted, which aren't the nine songs which are necessarily on it now, but there was kind of way more of a, a rock influence in there, I think, because I think we both grew up listening to a lot more kind of heavy driving music. and. Um, the way I see it is my music is more felt about and this is more thought about like we would sit down and really kind of play the instruments and think about um, how sections move into each other and um, structures and instrumentation whereas with my older music it'd be a more more of I've written this song quickly because this is how I feel and I'm just going to record it um, so it's just a completely different process it's, it's more like you're sculpting a song together. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but actually. then there is some there is some of that on the record. I feel like Freehand, which is the last song it's on the record, was done very quickly and yeah. uh, it was just you it know, we wrote it and then we just recorded it straight away and that and it really kind of has that vibe to it, which is great. Um, but yeah, I kind of I like kind of really looking in depth into it and just um, well, I, like I said, I've learned that from Ali, it's just making mm -hmm. sure everything is as good as it possibly could be. Thematically, then, is it? How, how do you get on the same page? Because obviously, uh, you have your own things that you like to talk about. So, so how do you do? You discuss uh, themes, topics. I think we've got enough similar influences okay. to you know to yeah. share. But then there's certain things that I, I mean, like that I'm not so exactly the same for me. I, uh, there was there was kind of defined roles at times, you know, because like Ed wrote pretty much all the lyrics for the record, whereas I was pretty much the main producer for it all and like the mixing engineer. So kind of, um, I mean, the lyrics came kind of pretty much afterwards. 
I guess. Um, it's very much like melody driven, the songwriting. Yeah, and we, we would argue over riffs and little things that one of us wanted in and really have to kind of shout for. One of us, me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I think like that's that's a great thing about doing collaborative stuff is um, just even little ideas make such a big difference, and it's important mm -hmm. to get to have like two ticks instead of one on a lot of those things. Yeah, because not not everything we made has ended up on the record. There's songs which you know we thought were great at the time. Now looking back, it's just not going to work because being such like a long period. If we went back to if we made the record now, it would sound completely different, and mm -hmm. I think the production value would be so much higher. But mm -hmm. I can't really hold that against us because. We pretty much made it in in a house with a few rooms. There was like a piano downstairs next to the kitchen. We recorded a bunch of the guitars in like my old bedroom, and like drums in like a separate room. And, and now I kind of live in a more of a studio space where I can make more refined songs. The only song that we did there was Terraform, um, and I think you can notice a slight difference in the production mm -hmm. quality. Um, but it's just, I mean, like albums, like albums are often kind of a and um, a passage in time that you know, when you wrote and recorded them. I feel like this does reflect that. Yeah. And I find it interesting, <coughs> and I, I, I ask this um, of pr producers oftentimes, but when, and you say you're quite indecisive at times, so, so when do you know to stop or to stop <laughs> thinking, to know again? It's always um, hard, isn't it? You, you know, you can always add and take things away. Yeah, exactly. Because um, I overdo it with a lot of music, just layering ideas, just thinking that some guitar riffs will sound nice over each other when really simplicity is key for a lot of times. And for you know my solo stuff, I'll have people like Ed where I'll send, send kind of nearly finished production to and he'll be like, yeah, that sounds great. And it'll be just a case of me mixing it and send it to some other people say, what do you think of this? Yeah. Um, but I feel like I can trust myself enough to know. And it, it comes to a point where you know that nothing can be perfect and you need to just get some music out if right. if you want to be an artist. Well, you so. just have to make a decision at some point. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm not incapable. I mean, there's been a lot, this, I mean, this record's gone through a lot of like most final versions, which <laughs> never actually were final versions. I mean, there was one point where we were going to like mysteriously post a nine song track listing and like two of those songs are on the record and now it's <laughs> 11 songs. So it's like four different songs on it, you know, so. But that always happens. You kind of get ahead of yourself and yeah. um, but it's it, you know it's fun to kind of plan things and think oh wow I can't wait for this to be out and stuff but sometimes you need to be a bit more careful about right. picking things. <laughs>